Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY. Today we're talking about house load or the weight that we need to deal with when supporting our house for our foundation repair. <music> I figured the best way to show you guys how to calculate load is draw you up a little diagram and just run through how I calculated load for my house. So right here we have a little diagram of a side cut out of my house. We have our attic, second floor, first floor, basement, and our ground cellar, and that is where we showed you guys the walk around and planning video. So right here we have a, some pink bars, purple bars, and these represent our floor joists or ceiling joists. We have some orange columns, these represent uh, foundation. And right here, this leaning one, this is the foundation wall that we're going to be replacing. And here is our rear fieldstone wall. And right here we have our floor jacks and beams on either side and this is what is going to be carrying the load. So how do we calculate load on a bearing point on our foundation? Well, the easiest way to do that is to measure the span from one load point to the other. So we have a foundation wall here with joists running this way and a foundation or load point right here. So to calculate how much load is on this front wall right here, we divide our house in half or the span in half. And we just calculate how much this part of the house right here weighs. And that is the load that will be supported by this foundation wall. Uh, we have a house that is 15 feet wide and half of that is seven and a half feet. So we will be calculating seven and a half feet by 25 feet long. That's how long my house is. But we're running into a little certain uh, or specific circumstance where our load point is not on this foundation wall. It will actually be at the jack and beam point right here. So we need to divide this span between the floor jack and our rear foundation wall in half. So that would look more like this. Uh, this is our half point right here. So the load that we would need to be calculating would look like this. We need to calculate for this area right here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we will just move this over here, is we will calculate 10 and a half feet instead of seven and a half. That will give us that extra three feet that we have our jack and beam set back. So this, you're gonna see this measurement a lot. So there are two types of loads, and the first one that we're gonna deal with is dead load. So we'll come over here, you're gonna see all of these calculations here for dead load. And uh, all of these calculations here, I got from hudusr.gov. It's this nice publication that has all sorts of construction stuff to it. And that's where I got all of my calculations from. So where we're gonna start, is on our roof construction. We have a light frame roof with wood structural panel sheathing and half inch drywall and asphalt shingles. That gives us 15 pounds per square foot. So we'll go back to our diagram here. Everything that we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be calculating the area of a certain part of our structure and then just multiplying that by whatever's on the table to get our pounds per square foot. So our roof, 10 and a half feet long or wide by 25 feet long. That's a square area. And we're going to multiply that by 13 pounds per square foot. And you may be wondering why it's 13 instead of 15. We can subtract two pounds per square foot because this is not a finished attic. There's no drywall in there. So we can subtract thir or two pounds per square foot, giving us a total poundage of 3,000 413 pounds. So that's how much our roof weighs for this half or the section of the house. So now we can go ahead and move towards our floors. Our attic and second floor are the exact same. So those calculate out to 2,625 pounds. Now our first floor is a little different. Um, we're at eight pounds per square foot because our, our basement is not finished. 
so we can subtract two pounds per square foot for no drywall. That gives us a total of 2,100 pounds for this first floor right here. So now that we have our floors done, we can move down to our exterior walls. So we'll start with our attic, 10 and a half feet by, it's a six foot high attic. And a little Pythagorean theorem here, we go height times uh, length times half. That gives us one side, there's two sides. Multiply that by two and eight pounds per square foot. And where we're getting that eight pounds per square foot is wall construction, light frame, two by four walls with half inch wood structural panel sheathing and half inch drywall with vinyl siding that gives us seven pounds per square foot but i have two by six walls so i'm going to add one pound per square foot so just go by these tables here so that was, was is where we're getting our eight pounds per square foot so that's going to be the same for all of our exterior walls so if we go ahead and calculate our attic our second floor one side two sides and our first floor side and front so that calculates out to, for our attic, 504 pounds. Our second story side and front, 1,344 and 1,600 pounds for the front. And that's the exact same for the first floor side and front. So now we have that, we can move on to our interior walls. And our interior walls are six pounds per square foot. That includes a two by four partition wall with drywall on each side. So up on our second floor, I have a hallway uh, running the length. We're not gonna subtract for doors or anything just to keep it simple. And in my first floor, I also have a wall right here. So we're gonna calculate that um, times two also, since it's a wall on either side or steps going down. So that gives us uh, 1,008 pounds. So all we're gonna do now is add up all of our dead load with everything here, and that gives us a total of 19,171 pounds. So that is how much dead load or just structural components, how much they actually weigh. So now we need to get into our second type of load, and that is live load. So what live load is, it's basically everything that you can just cram into your house. That includes your furniture, your dining room set, laundry, uh, your washer dryer, kitchen stuff, your stove, fridge, even your kitchen cabinets. Anything that has nothing to do with your structure, actual structure of the house and stuff like that. Um, live load pertains to anything that you can put into it. Uh, including people. So let's go ahead and calculate that. And all we're gonna do is floor area for that. So on huduser.gov, we have a table for that. So it's live loads. We have um, attic with storage at 20 pounds per square foot and our floors, bedrooms and other areas. Now we also, you can see roof load up here. That is for stuff like snow load. We're not getting going to get into that because we're in the summer months, but if you were doing this during the winter, definitely do a live load for your roof. So we have an attic um, and it's the exact same. We're finding the area for our floor and multiplying that by the floor load of 20 pounds per square foot. So our attic second and first floor, we have 5,250 for the attic. 7,875 for the second floor and 10,500 for the first floor. It's a lot more weight because it's a general common use area. So our total live load is 23,625. So now all we need to do is to add together our dead and our live load to get a grand total of 42,796. So that 42,000, that is calculated by weighing this area right here. So all of that load is now gonna be coming down on this floor jack and beam right here. So that's how much weight this needs to support. So we have six floor jacks that we're gonna be putting under there and they each can hold 38,000 pounds at their lowest height or 20,000 pounds at their max height, which is like eight 
four, I believe it is. Eight foot four inches. So if we go ahead and divide our 42,000 pounds, 796, we're gonna support it with six floor jacks. That is 7,000 pounds each. So that is well within its load carrying capabilities for that. So this gives you a really good idea of how many floor jacks you're gonna need, the size of beams you're gonna need, and it helps you calculate and see how much weight you're gonna be supporting. So this is on, that 42,000 is on this side of the house. When we take out this foundation wall, we're also gonna need to support our porch and laundry, because that is also sitting on this. And that is at 12,224 pounds. We have three floor jacks over here spanning that 25 feet long area. And again, we are well within our load carrying capabilities for that. So this is how I calculated load. Um, I just did um, some research on that HUD user. I think that's a really good source. Um, of course, this is not a professional uh, way to do it. Um, this is just gives you a general idea. If the if there are professional engineers out there, I would love to hear from you to see how close we got with our load calculations. And if there's anything that I missed, um, post that in the comments below so other people can uh, get that information and just do a better job next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos because we have a lot more foundation repair videos coming out. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.